The last commercial supersonic flight was over 17 years ago. Were you around to see it happen? The maximum speed of air travel has decreased since, but that is set to change in the next decade as several manufacturers work on new aircraft. Imagine a world where New Yorkers can head to London for the day and be back in their own bed by the end of the night. Well, if all goes according to plan, this type of supersonic travel could happen before the end of the decade. We can't discuss the current race for supersonic aircraft without a quick look back at the last one. This is not the first time we've seen manufacturers rushing to develop and launch a supersonic aircraft. Last time there was one clear winner, but several others tried. Of course, the most successful aircraft developed was Concorde, a joint British and French development that took its first flight in 1969 and started service in 1976. Despite numerous airlines placing orders and options for Concorde, British Airways and Air France would be the only airlines to take orders of the jet. Each airline took seven aircraft and a further six aircraft were developed as prototypes and test models. Despite the glory, Concorde had its challenges. It was incredibly expensive to operate and environmentally unfriendly. With a capacity of just 100 passengers, ticket prices had to be high. It also had to compete with much more luxurious business and first-class products with lower pricing and more frequent service. The initial concerns surrounding factors such as the environment, noise pollution and costs continues to play a part in the downfall of Concorde through the years. When it was designed, jet fuel wasn't so expensive. However, following the oil crisis of the mid-1970s, the profit margins were tight and it became a struggle to maintain healthy operations with a capacity of only 100 passengers. After a fatal crash in 2000 and the catastrophic events of 2001, Concorde flew its last commercial flight in 2003. The only other commercial supersonic aircraft to be manufactured was the Russian-built Tupolev Tu-144. This in itself was a great achievement and the aircraft was impressive, with higher capacity 140 versus 100 and higher speed Mark 2.15 compared to 2.04 than the Concorde. This came at a cost, however, and had a higher fuel burn with a shorter range. The Tu-144 first flew two months before Concorde, not surprising given the competitive race to develop it. It only ever operated one route, Moscow to Almaty, but had a much shorter time in commercial service than Concorde. Its reputation suffered after it crashed at the Paris Air Show in 1973. It was then withdrawn from service after a subsequent crash a few years later. As well as the two aircraft that were successfully built and operated, there were other attempts in the 1960 and 1970s supersonic race. Perhaps the best known of these was the Boeing 2707. The Boeing 2707, also known as the SST or Supersonic Transport, was the United States answer to Europe's Concorde. It promised higher capacity, speed and range than the Concorde. It also received more orders, 115 from 25 customers. Despite this, the project was cancelled in 1971 amidst changing economic conditions and fear of substantial construction and operation costs. Another US project that the government considered was from Lockheed. The L-2000 used a delta wing design rather than the swing wing design from Boeing. It was slightly faster but offered a lower capacity. With the end of Concorde, supersonic flights have been on hold for nearly 20 years now. Aircraft and aviation have progressed in other ways, of course. We've seen the launch of the largest passenger aircraft to date and the development of more fuel-efficient and environmentally friendly aircraft. There are even advances now in electric and hydrogen-powered aircraft. While supersonic travel has certainly faded from view for a while, it's now making a comeback with several manufacturers well on the road to launching a supersonic commercial jet. There have been improvements in the speed and accuracy of computer simulations, so it's now more effective to look at new noise-reducing designs. Additionally, there have been boosts in small business jet users, so the likes of Aerion are looking at these segments. One thing all these aircraft share is a focus on efficiency. Manufacturers have learned lessons from Concorde, Tupolev and the Boeing SST. These all promised a lot, but with high fuel burn and great cost. Airlines and increasingly environmentally aware passengers could not take this today.
With development happening as we speak, let's look at some of these new supersonic jets in more detail, coming from companies such as Boom, Arian, Spike Aerospace, and Virgin. The furthest ahead in development is the Boom Overture. It's the only current proposed aircraft that offers commercial scale capacity. The others are all under 20 passengers, focusing more on the corporate market. Boom's aircraft will be a 55-seater, capable of reaching Mark 2.2, and with a range of up to 8,334 kilometers. While just over half the capacity, the Boom Overture flies slightly faster and further than Concorde's Mark II and 7,223 km range. The company is promising some impressive flight times. Imagine four and a half hours from Tokyo to Seattle, Los Angeles to Sydney in eight and a half hours, and London to New York in just three and a half hours. Indeed, if all goes according to plan, the Boom Overture will complete most flights in just over half the time a conventional airliner would. Efficiency is attained from a combination of materials including carbon composites, titanium, and aluminium. These have been engineered for maximum efficiency while still being able to withstand the extreme heat of supersonic flight. Boom is hoping that the ticket price will be in the same region as a business class ticket today, about a quarter of the price airlines had to charge for Concorde. Compatible with sustainable aviation fuels, the Overture's prototype uses General Electric J85 engines, but Rolls-Royce engines may be used for the final version. Boom Supersonic released the XB-1 demonstrator aircraft for the Overture in October 2020. This is the first new civilian supersonic aircraft to be released since 1968 and marks a great step forward. The XB-1, or Baby Boom, is a one-third scale demonstrator, 68 feet long with a 17-foot wingspan. It's expected to start test flights in 2021. Assuming test flights in 2021 proceed successfully, we could see Boom's final configuration and engine choice in place by the end of the year. Boom intends to fly six Overture testbeds for two years. Therefore, it could be in service sometime between 2025 and 2027 at the earliest. There are already orders from airlines for Boom's Overture. Boom has commitments from five airlines to buy 76 aircraft. This includes Virgin Atlantic and Japan Airlines. If you're liking this video so far, why not click subscribe and hit the like button? Oh, and be sure to click that notification bell too. The next aircraft we'll look at is Arian, an American aerospace manufacturer based in Reno, Nevada. This company is developing a jet named the AS-2, which will be the first privately built supersonic business jet. This will be very different from the Boom Overture and Concorde. With just 8 to 12 seats, it's clearly targeted at the business and corporate jet market. The AS-2 will also be slower, with a top speed of Mach 1.2, still enough to make a four-hour flight from London to New York. The jet has an impressive commitment to environmentally sound operation. In addition to focusing on fuel-efficient design and operation, it's aiming for carbon-neutral emissions from the very first flight. The AS-2 will run on 100% sustainable aviation fuels, and Arian will offer a carbon offsetting program to customers. Construction is yet to begin, but Arian completed wind tunnel testing in November 2020. It's hoped that component construction will begin in 2022 and assembly in 2023. It's reported that the first AS-2 delivery is planned for 2027. Third up is Boston-based Spike Aerospace, which has plans for a business jet with a capacity of 12 to 18 passengers and a speed of Mach 1.6. The Spike jet stands out from the others for its range, an impressive 11,500 kilometers, which would allow travel from London to Hong Kong in 5.7 hours, or Dubai to New York in 6.5 hours. It also plans to have a windowless cabin with external images projected inside, this will reduce structural cost and complexity. This is in the early stages, but the company is ambitious. Spike intends to develop a two-thirds scale demonstrator by the end of 2021 and is aiming for aircraft deliveries from 2025. The last commercial supersonic jet concept we'll look at is Virgin Galactic's Mark III, which was unveiled in August of 2020. 
This has been developed together with UK engine maker Rolls-Royce and will be a smaller, business-focused jet with a capacity of up to 19 passengers. As its name suggests, it'll offer a top speed of Mark III, well ahead of the competition. While London to New York in anything less than four hours is impressive, the Mark III would cut that in half, completing the journey in a staggering two hours. The Mark III remains in the design and proposal stage and a development timescale has not been released. Virgin also has ambitions to go further, and once the Mark III is developed, we could well see larger supersonic developments to follow. There are a few other notable supersonic projects underway or planned that should be mentioned. While these will not initially lead to a flying passenger jet, we could see their achievements integrated into future supersonic commercial aircraft. Lockheed Martin is working in partnership with NASA on the X-59 Quest supersonic jet. This too has focused on efficiency and tries to mitigate the noise caused by a sonic boom. This boom prevented Concorde from flying supersonic over the mainland US, something that would be important to overcome for a larger market. The X-59 will be an experimental aircraft designed to test and develop the technology and isn't planned as a commercial or passenger jet. In August 2020, a public affairs officer at NASA told Simple Flying, while 2021 was our target date, potential impacts from COVID and production challenges are being assessed and an updated target flight date will be announced once this assessment is complete. In August 2020, we reported on SimpleFlying.com on an early contract from the US Air Force to look at a hypersonic passenger jet's potential, likely as part of the VIP and presidential fleet. A $1.5 million contract was awarded to startup company Hermes to look into an aircraft capable of reaching Mark V. It won this contract after it successfully tested a Mark V combined cycle engine prototype in February 2020. Clearly, it's early days for such technology, but it could proceed quickly with government backing. Such speeds would change travel beyond recognition, as Mark V is equivalent to 6,174 kilometers per hour. Just like the supersonic race of the 60s and the 70s, it appears Russia could be interested too. We've yet to see any firm proposals, but funding from the government was announced in mid-2020. Funding of 15.5 billion rubles or $205 million will be spread over the next four years for several high-tech projects, including supersonic flights. Early indications are that a passenger aircraft could be based on the already operational Tu-160 military supersonic aircraft. Noise pollution, particularly the sonic boom associated with supersonic flight, remains a problem. Regulations have not shifted much in this area, and overland operations will likely still be very limited, including over the US. The US FAA is looking at revising proposals for supersonic flights, but there will still be restrictions. Companies, though, are addressing this with the spike engineering, the S512, to reduce sonic boom noise to just 75 perceived decibels. Lockheed Martin is aiming for the same. For comparison, Concorde had a 105 decibel perceived boom. With the slowdown in aviation and business travel in particular, it may seem like the wrong time to be developing supersonic travel. There could be significant challenges in the next period of supersonic travel. Passenger demand is generally at an all-time low, and many companies are getting used to conducting virtual meetings. For many years, these plans have been in place, though, and are still some time from completion. We may see delays as budgets are stretched or markets reassessed, but it seems that the appetite for supersonic aircraft is back, but will be smaller and much more efficient than before. Technology has moved on a long way since the first supersonic race, of course. The push then was to achieve supersonic flight, seemingly at whatever fuel burn was necessary. Today, efficiency is a major focus of all manufacturers, and this should make a big difference to aircraft appeal for both airlines and passengers. Are you excited about the prospect of a return to supersonic travel? Will airlines succeed in making it commercially viable this time? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Did you know that we publish over 175 stories every single week on simpleflying.com? Be sure to check the link in the description for more great stories just like this. Thanks for watching. 
and be sure to like and subscribe before you go.